We are, of course, in the company of Ben Habib, uh, former MEP. We've been talking about the migrant crisis, but the other crisis, of course, that's facing certainly not just um, London, but larger parts of the country, uh, Ulez and Sadiq Khan in particular. He's coming under an awful lot of pressure. You know, we had his uh, ridiculous guidelines on his website last weekend about, you know, how white people are not representative of London and shouldn't be used in well, campaigns. Right? I that's find that thing. so offensive, yes. Mike, that he should say that white people are not representative of London. Yeah, unbelievable. I've always suspected him of being racist, but that is an out out and out racist comment well you can't imagine it any other way can you i mean yeah. imagine if if somebody put out a comment that said here's a picture of some muslims in london they're, they're not, not representative, representative of london or there's some there's a black family uh, sitting in hyde park not representative of london there's no way that yeah. anybody who said that would even have a job and racism against white people is racism yeah but it's just racism yeah people said um, lord does was there yesterday she called it reverse racism somebody pointed out on uh, the text no it's just racism it's just racism it's not a question of you know what color your skin is yeah i used to call it reverse racism mm. but you're right it's, it's just not. racism it's the same thing and um he should he there should be at the very least a labor party inquiry into mm. what the hell went on right. don't you think well the labor party's been very quiet and i know that howard cox who's the uh, mayoral candidate for reform has asked for keir starmer to at least suspend him while they look into it but not one senior Labour figure no. has even said a word about it. And, and this is the thing, isn't it? Diversity and inclusion is all very well unless it comes to the upholding mm. of the rights of white people. Yes. No one cares. No, exactly right. No one cares. On the Equalities that, Act is completely inoperable when it comes to the protection of the vast majority yeah, of this country. Exactly right. And even London, albeit not a white British uh, majority any longer, is still a white majority. 54% of people in London are white. Some of them are from Eastern European countries and other European countries, but they're still white. The majority of people in London are white. It's just a fact. It's not anything yeah. to do with um, you know, therefore that's good or bad. It's just a fact. So actually, they he's are wrong. Representative. He's also wrong yeah. to say that they're not representative. So uh, also, secondly, we find out today um, that there's evidence that uh, Sadiq Khan urged scientists, or his deputy rather, urged scientists to alter a study which showed an emission scheme had no impact on child health, because we all know that the ULES scheme is not about cleaning it's the air It's got nothing up. to do with It's all about yeah, raising yeah. money. And we also discovered today, an exclusive for, uh, for you from Talk TV, we got an FOI request into the Mayor's office about that mate campaign, do you remember that? Uh, where they had uh, Romesh Ranganathan telling people to check their friends and make sure they weren't as if being that's going misogynists. To, I know, extraordinary. Um, yeah. Although, as I said, well, you better not pop down a local mosque then. You're going to find that uh, women aren't very welcome in some parts of it where they're not even allowed to go. Yeah, but I don't go in there, mate. <laughs> you know, um, here's the thing. Um, you're going to play the uh, uh, the Ramesh thing? Yeah, OK. Let's, let's hear it. We've got it here. Have Just we got, got it, here? mate. Um, here we go saying that is rank or mate she doesn't want to talk to you anymore or mate you need to move away from her i think that's something we should be doing more of and i am imploring you to whenever you see anything like that you throw them a mate and you let your friend know if they carry on behaving like that they're not going to be your mate much not going to be your mate much longer uh, well that apparently cost us quarter of a million quid that ad uh, the campaign. The campaign. Uh, we asked what the campaign uh, was all about and how it was uh, funded. And apparently, uh, the mayor's office have said it was two hundred and twenty thousand um, pounds. But may mayoral campaign partners contributed additional value in kind, free of charge, worth over one and a half million. Um, apparently, the interactive film cost £19,550. Romesh Ranganathan, for his role, uh, apparently contributed his uh, efforts free of charge. Sorry, that's very good What of a him. guy. Yeah, what a guy. Mate. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is well, our you know, money. You, you know, know they committee. talk about this being the mayor's office money. It's, not, it's our money. It's our money. And the committee that he set up to review which statues should be brought down, yeah. that was £200 million. And uh, what's going on with that? Is it still going well, it's on? It's still going on, yeah. Because he's got a collection of sort of bozos, hasn't he? They're all sitting on this committee deciding all, all whether they don't people, like Winston Churchill. All people who you would readily agree are yeah. antipathetic yeah. to the country. Right. Well, there'll be somebody going, you know, I've got a view on Winston Churchill. You know, the man who saved Britain from the Nazis, the man who won the Second World War. Um, and who are you? Uh, I once wrote a piece for The Guardian in 1973. <laughs> yes. yeah. and, so, so what? Who cares what you think? And Winston Churchill, according to these people, yeah. is a white supremacist. That's right. Some white supremacist. Mm. He delivered the country to the point at which we are now, where we can have these kind of discussions, yeah. where idiots like that yeah. get a platform to talk, talk utter mm. nonsense. Yes. If he'd lost, 
there'd be none of those idiots around yeah, right now. Right. Life under Nazi Germany might have been considerably different. Mm, it would have been. And funnily enough, uh, with the names of, uh, of the roads that they want to change as well in jeopardy, you know, it's bad news for Blackfriars Bridge, bad news for the Blackfriars Pub, um, bad news for Blackfriars Road. I presume we're going to change you know, this all that. Is, this is what third world countries do when they want to rewrite history, when they want yeah. to give their new dictator uh, sort of legitimacy. They change all the names of the roads. They take statues down. Mm. That's what they're trying to do in the United Kingdom. They're bringing that kind of banana republic, dictatorial, mm. totalitarian mm. attitude to the UK. Yeah. And they may not be doing it in the same way, but it ends up with the same result. Mm. We're basically being asked to turn our back on our history, where we came from, and adopt mm. this and new thing. And to be ashamed of it. And to be ashamed yeah. of it. Well, it's, I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm very proud of it. Mm. I'm very proud of the British Empire. Yeah. And I think we should repeatedly say that. Mm. It, be, you're almost cowed now. You, people look at you like you're a swivel-eyed lunatic mm. if, you're, if you say you're, pr you're proud of the British Empire. Yeah. Well, I'm proud of it. So am I. We did that abolish slavery. Us. We yeah. did abolish slavery at a time there was no pressure on us to abolish it. Yeah. We instituted human rights when there was no pressure on us yeah. to institute it. We brought law yeah. and order to vast swathes of the, of the globe. And we should be proud of that legacy. We must not go around like Justin Welby would have us do. Mm apologising for the slave trade. Yeah. Well, those who participated participated in the slave trade died 200 yeah. years ago. Well, do you know what? If Justin Welby so bothered about slavery, he should jump in a black cab at Lambeth Palace, take a trip across Lambeth Bridge, go straight up to Victoria, over into Mayfair, where he will find many homes occupied by many foreign dignitaries and people who've got an awful lot of money, who have got a few Filipinos in the basement who work as slaves for them. And I think if they really want to stop slavery, then that's how they do it. You could also take a train up to Leicester and go and check the garment district out and see how many people are being enslaved there. And you could also pop up to, I don't know, any number of car washes and find out where all the Albanians who wash the cars sleep and see what sort of conditions they're in. Because yeah. that's modern slavery. They don't care about that. No, they don't. It, it, it's, it's Complete a, it, and utter hypocrites. It, it's an outward, overt attack. Mm on being British, basically. Yeah. It's an attack on the British state. And what their aim is, this is what I think their aim is, it's to undermine our self-confidence. If, we, if we're ashamed of our history, if we lose our mm. belief in our heritage, if our values are trashed, you become unconfident as a, as a person. It's not working, is it? Well, it's not working for me. It's not working on me. No, or me, <laughs> uh, or anybody This is this show. Uh, meanwhile, uh, we can still give money to India. This is a country where uh, they are today sending up Chandrayaan-3, uh, which is the moon lander Vikram, aiming for an historic lunar South Pole landing. Apparently it's going to happen sometime today. Um, at the same time, and this to me sums up the problem with some of these countries, right? We're giving them aid. They've got lots of money of their own, but they've got problems of their own because at the same time as they're about to, you know, launch themselves and land on the dark side of the moon, um, 26 people have died because a bridge has collapsed in another part of the country because their infrastructure isn't worth a fag end. So India... But they can send a rocket to the moon and they can take our money. Well, how about you look after your own people? Well, quite. And, I, I mean, India's a really interesting case. Mm. Um, you know, it's a country of sort of extremes, isn't it? You have mm. extreme poverty, you have extreme wealth, yeah. you have this space program, yet you have infrastructure that's falling apart. And it is a country that we wish to trade with, we want to sell them our products. No doubt they'll end up selling more of their stuff to us than we would under any trade deal sell to them. Mm. But it is certainly not a country to whom we should be sending aid. It's perfectly capable of determining its own economic policies and making its own ends meet. Mm. If, it's, if it chooses to send a rocket to the moon, it's choosing not to fix the problems we've just identified. Yeah. That's their prerogative. Yeah. What we should not be doing is sending them a few hundred million right. pounds in aid. And also, they're sending us back an awful lot of foreign students, some of whom are coming here to be students, some of whom are not. Um, but they're coming here legally as part of the 1.2 million people who came here in 2022. And we're also hearing that a lot of people from India who are being turned down for those visas are now coming on the small boats as well. Really? From India? Yeah, from India. Because wow. when they change the rules on the Albanians, the human traffickers are clever people. You know, they've got a very good business model. They just shifted it and they went, all right, we're going to bring people from India instead of yeah. Albania. And that's what's going on. Well, it tells you what life in India is like, even though it may now be um, a, a sort of superpower, yeah. you know. Well, you get to have a nice well. room like that guy's got, you yeah. know. Um, why wouldn't you come?